All right, here we go. 21.4, 21.5, 21.6, starting with geothermal energy. So some people have been asking about this. So you can see the geothermal resources in the United States, they're greatest in the Western states, like that caption says right there. Okay, obviously you don't think of like the Rocky Mountains and the Cascades and whatnot, they're kind of going on right around in there. Okay, so the geothermal energy sources are basically, think of them as they're closer to the surface, so they're easier to harness. Now the geothermal the thing I wrote there is not distributed evenly. So obviously, you know, compare like, you know, Virginia and Maryland and stuff like that and Florida per se over to like, you know, Oregon and Idaho and stuff like that. So the thing I also wrote is like, you know, think about Hawaii compared to Kansas. You know, obviously the lava and the, the magma are really, really, really close to the surface near on the big island, but in Kansas it's obviously not as good. So the, the net or they're not distributed evenly not only around the country, but around the world as well. So the 21, excuse me, uh, 2120, this diagram here basically shows how a geothermal plant works. So you can see number one, the magma is on the bottom. It heats up the groundwater that are in the aquifers. Okay, that's going to generate a bunch of steam. So this geyser, like think about like, you know, Yellowstone National Park. That's why there are geysers right there, because the water is being, being heated up so the steam shoots out. So the geothermal plant is basically capturing that heat's energy and then basically using that to turn a turbine with that steam and everything, like we've talked about a bunch of times. So moving on to page 596, there's also a thing called ground source heat pumps. So these are typically used in like smaller communities. So they can cool the homes in the summer, they can warm the homes in the winter, and the ground temperature stays consistent. So the diagrams, and I'll show you them on the bottom in just a quick second, they're 21, uh, figure 2122, basically shows how this whole stuff works. Now this obviously, like we just talked about, is that geothermal energy isn't, isn't spread out evenly. So this doesn't work in certain parts of the country. So, it, you know, at times, you know, during the summer, there's going to be a lot of hotter, or there's going to be warmer, wa warmer water coming out of the house. Then it cools down and then comes back into the house. Flip side, look at winter. Winter, you're going to have cold water coming out of the house because it's colder up top. That water will warm up in the ground and then comes back in and will heat the house. Okay, This is happening up in Iceland, and I talked about this the other day. And I'm not even going to try and say the word, the name of that town. But in Iceland, they're really, really close to a lot of geothermal stuff. So they're doing a ton of geothermal energy plants, not only to get heated water, and they can use that to heat communities and houses and commercial buildings, stuff like that, but they're also using that to generate electricity to, to turn those turbines like we've talked about. All right, so next, there's these ocean energy sources. Now on this page, I don't have a sticky note, but I kind of wanted to talk about, like you can see basically a big, huge, kind of modern technology going on right there. The explanation, I like this pretty well. Okay, it's kind of explained in picture form real easily. Now it says incoming waves, you can also think of this, rather than just the waves, think of it as like the tide coming in and the tide going out. And that's one of the reasons they have this big concrete like wall going down. So if the wave comes in, the water's gonna rush in, it's gonna, that water will rise up. There is a column of air that is trapped inside of here. So as the column of air goes up, it turns the turbine, that creates electricity. Then as the water falls, it's gonna turn the turbine again, which also is gonna create energy. So that's how they're harnessing the oceans, uh, oceans to use it for energy sources. All right, so next we're talking about, um, actually I should talk about right um, here I am. So we can harness tidal energy by allowing the water to spin turbines. So again, this is just kind of another version of what they're doing. So you can see the ocean there as tide goes in, goes into the basins and back and forth and back and forth. Okay, next we can move on to hydrogen fuel cells. So again, I didn't put a, uh, a sticky note on either of these two pages as you can see, because there's not really much to really write besides just simply needing to know how this stuff works is basically all it is. All right, so here's the hydrogen fuel cells. This image is pretty good, 2126. So 
Start with, where's number one? Start with number one. Hydrogen molecules are stripped of electrons at the negative, elec at the negative electron, leaving hydrogen ions. So they come on in here, then the hydrogen ion goes across. See the protons transverse the membrane. So basically, electrons go away, protons go across. So the electrons move from the negative electrode to the positive electrode, creating current and generating electricity. So basically, they're going from one side to the other. So again, they're talking about this magnet stuff I was talking about the other day. That's how electricity is generated. You stick some oxygen in there, and you create water. So it's a very, very, very clean energy source. You stick in hydrogen, you stick in oxygen, and you get water out of it. Really straightforward. There's no like air pollution coming out of this, anything like that. So that's why, if you've seen a lot of the buses are on natural gas and on hydrogen fuel, that's why they're doing that. Then there's just more kind of like the explanation chemistry version on page 600. So pretty straightforward lecture and honestly not too many sticky notes but just to kind of review the last couple of different new renewables we talked about. Leave some questions, we got some in the chat.